Let us try to learn more about the different data types in Elixir. The first thing which I wanted to remind you is all of the data types in Elixir are immutable. In common terms, what I mean to say is all of the data types inside Elixir are constants. Now with this concept in mind, let us go ahead and let us try to study the first data type and the data type is called as an atom. An atom in Elixir looks something like this. So we have a colon symbol right over here and after the colon we have the name of the atom. And in case there is some space inside the name of the atom, then we can write an atom like this. So again, the syntax goes like this. Your atom will always start with a colon and then we have the name of the atom. And in this case, since we have a space inside the name of our atom, we are using double quotes. And inside the double quotes, we have the name of the atom. Now this was just the syntax of an atom. But now let us go ahead and let us try to understand what's an atom all about. So let's consider this scenario. So we have a symbol or a logo like this. Can you tell me what this logo symbolizes? Now this logo is of a very popular brand and that brand is Nike. So what's happening in this case? This symbol is synonymous with the name of Nike. If I show you the symbol or if I show you the name, both of these values point to the exact same thing. So this is just a pseudo code and this is not a valid elixir syntax, but let us understand the concept of an atom. So what's happening right over here is we have a variable and the name of the variable is Nike and the value assigned to this variable is also Nike. So in short, the value and the name are the same. And this is what an atom represents. In an atom, the name and the value is always same. And we can represent this in terms of atom like this. So we have an atom for Nike. Let us open up our IEX and we can start playing right over there. So this is my terminal. Let me go inside my IEX and let me clear out the screen. So let us create the same atom for Nike. So we can say Nike. This is what an atom is all about. Suppose we had a very long name that had spaces in between. So we can say something like this, the and Nike. So this is also a valid atom. And you will notice that our atom always starts with a colon. Now what we can do is let us go to our live book and there we can create a couple of more examples of atom. So this is our live book and let us create a new notebook. Let me give the title as data types and this section is all about our atom. In Elixir, you will see atoms everywhere. Atoms are very heavily used for pattern matching. Now suppose you are working on some kind of an application and you want to return an error message. So that time what we can do is we can simply create an atom called as error. So we can say something like this error and let us click on evaluate. So here it is, we have created an atom which is called as error. Next, let me show you a very practical use of this kind of an atom. So let's take the exact same example. Suppose we are working on an application and we have an error where we are not able to find a file. So at that time, it's very common to return back a tuple and the tuple is represented by this curly strings. Now I will cover tuples a little later in the series, but right now let's go with the flow. And inside the tuple, we can say that the first element is an error. So there is some error in that operation and then we can describe the reason for the error. So we can say, for example, file not found. And this kind of pattern is very common inside Elixir. Normally we will have a two element tuple or a three element tuple. And regularly you will see that we simply pattern match on this tuple. So what we can do is on the left hand side, we can again pattern match with this tuple. So let me create a new tuple right over here. And the first element is an error. The second element we can call it as a reason. Now again, what's happening over here is we are simply using our pattern matching. I want you to go back to the concept of your left hand side is equal to your right hand side. So on the right hand side, we have a tuple and on the left hand side, we have a tuple. Next, what is happening is on the right, we have a string called as file not found. 
and on the left we have a variable oh let me get the spelling right this has to be reason so what's happening is since we have a variable on the left hand side this value of file not found is being bound to our variable of reason so let us click on re-evaluate and let us see what's happening and we get our tuple back error file not found let us split this into different code blocks so let me create a code block right over here and let me take this code out from here and let me paste it right over here again let me click on re-evaluate and here also we can evaluate now what we can do is since we are using pattern matching we can extract the value of file not found and i just said that this value of file not found is bound to our variable of reason and we can check out the value by simply typing our reason and let us click on re-evaluate and here we get the value back file not found now this pattern is very very common in elixir so let us have a look at one more example and suppose this time we have a successful operation uh, for example if we are working on some kind of an web application and we get back a status 200 message so at that time what we can do is we can pattern match on ok and then we can have a message and here we can pass our ok and we can say status 200 ok and then we can see the contents of our message now let us click on evaluate and as you can see we get the value of message back so again the same thing is happening over here we simply have to pattern match the right hand side along with the left hand side ok is matching with the ok right over here and this string is being bound to our variable of message and that's what we are calling on the next line right over here well this was all about atoms and in the next video we will start with strings inside elixir